been hiring engineers at Google and Microsoft for years, and here's what most people don't realize. The best AI engineers aren't coming from just the AI boot camps or PhD programs. They are actually coming from software engineering background. One of my mentees, we will call her Sarah for the purpose of this video, she was a back-end engineer at a major tech company. She was building APIs in Java, making about $120,000. And after following this five-step roadmap that I'm going to share today, she landed an AI engineer role at a leading AI company, making about 280k. So today I'm sharing that exact roadmap with you to successfully transition into high paying AI engineering roles. Now, if you're new here, I'm Priyanka Vergadia, a cloud and AI expert with about 15 plus years in big tech companies. And in this channel, I talk about careers and tools in tech. So let's start with what is a software engineer and what is an AI engineer? How are they different? A software engineer builds applications, systems, and infrastructure. An AI engineer builds intelligent systems that can learn, predict, and make decisions. What's the key difference? Well, AI engineers combine the traditional software engineering with machine learning capabilities. Now, here's what's really interesting to me. You already have a massive advantage that most people overlook when you're a software engineer. You understand production systems, scalable architectures, APIs, and debugging. While data scientists struggle with deployment and bootcamp graduates that can't handle production complexity, you actually know how to ship code that actually works. You think in systems, not just in models. You understand that a machine learning model is just one component in a large software architecture. This systems thinking is exactly what makes software engineers successful AI engineers. Now let's dive into the roadmap itself. Now the first step is leveraging your software engineering foundation. Now this is where you get to skip ahead while everyone else is learning to code, right? If you're coming from Python, jump straight into Pandas and NumPy. If you're coming from Java or C Sharp, spend just two to three weeks brushing up on Python basics and then move to data science libraries. Your first advantage, you think in terms of functions and APIs. Machine learning models, they're just functions that take inputs and return predictions. This conceptual framework will accelerate your learning significantly. Now skip the theoretical math courses that bog down for beginners. You need applied linear algebra and statistics. Project idea. Now build a data analysis tool for a domain that you already understand. Think of it if you're working in e-commerce, analyzing sales data, if you did fintech, analyze transaction patterns, use your domain knowledge as your secret weapon to build this project. Now, step two, machine learning with software engineering mindset. Approach machine learning like learning any new framework. Scikit-learn's API design will feel familiar. It follows a similar pattern to libraries that you've already mastered. Your debugging skills is your secret weapon here. When a model doesn't perform well, you don't panic. You systematically debug, check your data quality, validate your assumptions, test edge cases. It's the same debugging process you use for software. Build your first ML API using Flask or FastAPI. This is where you'll shine compared to the data scientist. You understand HTTP, JSON, error handling, and production concerns that most data scientists struggle with. Use Kaggle competitions to strategically focus on building robust pipelines rather than just chasing leaderboard rankings. Your software engineering background means that you can build better, more maintainable solutions. Now, step three is deep learning implementations. Now, think of neural networks as complex function approximators with learnable parameters. Your experience with object-oriented programming helps here. Layers are objects, models are composed of layers. Start with PyTorch. It is imperative in nature and will feel more natural than TensorFlow, which is more declarative. You are used to writing code that executes line by line, and PyTorch matches that mental model. So don't build everything from scratch. Use pre-trained models and transfer learning. It's like using external libraries. You don't rewrite everything from ground up. Your specialization should align with your background. Now, web developers should focus on deploying models as web services. Backend engineers could focus on large-scale model serving. DevOps engineers could focus on ML ops. Now, those are some of the tips where you could begin. 
Step four is AI engineering and MLOps. This is where software engineers absolutely dominate. MLOps is just like DevOps for machine learning, and you already understand the CI, CD, monitoring, and containerization. Now, model training is like a build process. Model deployment is like any other service deployment. Model monitoring is like application performance monitoring with different parameters and metrics. Use MLflow for experiment tracking. Think of it as version control for your models. Docker your training environment just like you dockerize your application. Now apply the same engineering principles that you already know. Build an automated ML pipeline, code commit triggers training, successful training triggers deployment, deployment includes monitoring and rollback capabilities. It's CI CD for AI. Now step five, strategic career positioning, the most important step. Your portfolio should tell a story. I'm not just someone who learned AI. I'm a software engineer who can build production AI systems. That's the story you wanna tell. This combination is incredibly valuable and rare in the market. Frame your transition as expanding your skill set, not changing careers. You're not abandoning software engineering. You're becoming a software engineer who specializes in AI systems. And there's a difference there, right? Target roles that value your background, AI ML engineer, ML ops engineer, AI platform engineer. These roles pay significantly more than just that traditional software engineer role and value your production experience. Now in interviews, emphasize your production expertise and experience. When they ask about model accuracy, also talk about latency and scalability and monitoring. Show that you think about the entire system, not just the model. And this goes back to system design, distributed systems, thought process when you go for a software engineer engineering interview. This roadmap works because it builds on your existing strengths rather than starting from scratch. You're not competing with PhD researchers. You're targeting AI engineering roles that need people who can ship code to production, basically production systems. Remember, 80% of AI engineering is software engineering with some ML on the top. You already have hard part figured out. Now you just need to add that AI layer. If you found this video helpful, check out my complete AI engineer roadmap here, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.